Hello guys, and I know it very well that truth may not be the best thing to hear, but to survive this challenging times, we do have to be brutally honest with each other. We all know Russian war in Ukraine does not show any signs of ending, and after his fake success on elections, Putin may start a new wave of mobilization, cooperate more effectively with his authoritarian partners from China, North Korea, Iran, and the Russian economy has switched to military rails long ago, and they are ready to produce more missiles to target Ukraine and potentially not only Ukraine. Putin says about that in his speeches when he explains Russia is not just fighting with Ukraine, but with collective rotting decay in West and, of course, NATO. I know it may seem that as a Ukrainian I'm trying to share my fear with you, but actually German intelligence service also proves Putin is getting ready to attack a NATO country by 2026. Seems irrational, crazy, impossible, just as Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine seemed irrational, impossible, crazy back in January 2022. But we have to accept the fact Russia is crazy and irrational. And now we hear French President Emmanuel Macron speaking more and more often about the potential of sending French troops to Ukraine and lots of reactions around the world from total support to total disagreement. I think it's an important topic to discuss and let me tell you more from an ordinary Ukrainian perspective. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So I'm sure I don't have to remind you people that Putin is a crazy dictator, Putin is a person that threatens and blackmails the world, he uh, broke any international agreement available, he is ready to continue if Ukraine falls. Because it's not just about territory, pipeline or whatever. It is a clash between two civilizations, authoritarian and democratic, freedom and suppression. And uh, Ukrainians are fighting this evil for more than 10 years already since that start in 2014. And honestly, President Zelensky believed he could persuade Putin to stop. And this was one of the main messages in his election campaign. And in 2019, he met with dictator Putin with the help of Macron in France. It was something similar to the Normandy format of negotiations back in 2019. So we may honestly, openly say and sum up that both Zelensky and Macron did everything to negotiate with Putin and try to prevent this war crimes, this killings of thousands. But they failed because, not because they are bad communicators, but because Putin is a bloody dictator, Kremlin goblin. And later, after the start of full-scale war, Macron did a lot to speak with Putin. And there were lots of memes all around Ukraine, guilty, and I shared them too about him talking and talking and talking to this crazy dictator. And now I really feel sorry for the French president that he had to listen to this BS for so long. You watched Tucker Carlson interview and even for Tucker Carlson, it was really difficult to speak and to listen to Putin. And imagine Macron did that more often for longer periods and discussing more crazy topics. <clears throat> but now, uh, we see that he discusses the idea of international troops, French troops in Ukraine, and his idea was supported by a Czech president who has long NATO military experience. Moreover, those countries that were once occupied by Soviet Union and now NATO countries like the Baltics, like Poland, for example, they know really well it may happen one day that Russia will provoke, Russia will attack, and Russia will escalate. And that's why it is very painful and nervous, irritating, that's the word I was looking for, for me to listen to the reactions of Italian or German politicians who say, 
Let's not escalate. This can lead to escalation. Come on, attention, please. Germany, your intelligence services say that Putin and Russia are getting ready to attack NATO country in 2026. Where is your part of escalation here? So if you don't escalate, they will not attack until 2026. But this is Putin's plan. Putin's plan is to change word order for the sake of authoritarian regimes. Subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and democratic regimes. And now let's talk about these international troops in Ukraine. Putin often claims there are millions of NATO soldiers here. Unfortunately, not yet. We do have brave volunteers who've joined Ukrainian International Legion, but these numbers are really low and there is no any uh, foreign army, French, Italian, German, American here who would perform official operations. But even if we had these French troops, Italian troops, Czech troops, they would definitely not substitute Ukrainian soldiers in the hottest points of front lines. But they would be able to perform and help us with some uh, easier but still very important tasks. Like training of Ukrainian soldiers. Do you know that like thousands of Ukrainian soldiers have to travel abroad? For example, to the European Union, it's really far away to travel to the United States, for example, or Canada, but they need to travel to Europe, uh, to the European Union, uh, to train, to use some equipment, uh, to learn some strategies, military strategies, to exchange experience. And it is very difficult from the point of view of logistics, because these are thousands of Ukrainians who have to travel abroad, leave, eat there. And it's really complicated to travel with no airports in the country and lots of other things. And if military trainers could come to Ukraine and train soldiers here, this would be easier, cheaper, more effective, faster, and many more things. What is also important, these military trainers, professional military people, they do want to come to Ukraine and experience this war. It's important for their uh, knowledge, for their skills, for their training too, because in future, other conflicts may arise, other authoritarian regimes, or even the very same Russian Federation can attack their countries, and it's better to see the enemy here, uh, also, I live in the region that borders with Poland and Belarus. At this mo moment, Belarus po border is safe, but still Belarus is fully annexed by Russia. And we have to protect this border, even if it does not seem very dangerous in some big uh, areas. And for example, these foreign soldiers could safeguard uh, the border that is not active, but at the same time, Ukrainian soldiers need to protect it right now. And instead of performing combat operations, they are standing here. They could have been substituted by international troops to guarantee security, to observe the border. But at the same time, they won't need like fight actively. And also demining. It's a huge problem. And I feel very bad. It's painful when I read that now Ukraine is the most mined country in the world. My beautiful civilized, democratic country is the most mined country in the world. And it's not only in the East where active war takes place. It is also around Kiev, for example. Do you know it's not safe and it's not allowed to walk in many forests around Kiev, around Chernihiv, because they were mined by these crazy orcs that mine everything like crazy. They actually blow up themselves on these mines, but they continue mining. And demining is a task that might have been performed by international troops who are professional in that, who have special demining robots, know some techniques, know some practice. So these are, for example, just three tasks that I, as a civilian Ukrainian, have come up with. Demining, training, border control with Belarus. And important gesture to demonstrate solidarity and in our fight for democracy because we are not fighting just for Ukraine. This is a war between authoritarian regime and democratic world. And also, we are very grateful for all the supplies that we receive. You help us fight, you help us survive, but we invest 
the most because we invest lives of our soldiers. We invest our infrastructure, our cities, our memories, our parks, our schools, everything. And to feel the support and to feel the understanding of the essence of this war, that it's not a local conflict. It's not about pipelines, guys. It's about the future of the planet. And I know that people on this channel understand what I mean, but we have to spread this message further. That's why if you like the videos, like them, share, this helps a lot. There are not enough pro-Ukrainian voices after this two years of full-scale war, unfortunately, in the world. Follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty active there in sharing ordinary Ukrainian life. Also, I'm on X and Threats, and we have a beautiful Discord community. Let me know in the comments below, do you think that in future we may have French, Czech soldiers in Ukraine to back up Ukrainian army? And also, do you want a live stream this Saturday? Because I feel I've missed you and there are lots of topics we can discuss. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. It's an honor to have your support in my creative and professional life. Honestly, I did not expect it is possible. Also, we have a beautiful merch shop with really nice t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies that can work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. But most importantly, we have to stay united and Russia will not end this war. We have to end this war and potentially evil Russian regime. Slava Ukraini!